right, today I want to tackle something that I've been wanting to do before we actually um, take the car and dyno it. Um, this got something to do with my torque converter. Make a long story short, since I have the manual valve body 4080 with the CNC billet valve body from Extreme Automatics, the computer, um, based on the sensors and stuff inside the transmission, no longer locks up the torque converter. So I've had to make a custom table that I will show you later on in the video. But also one of the things I need to do is um, I wanted to add, uh, how can I say this? Um, with me having the Extreme's automatic valve body in the instructions, it says that you only can lock up the converter in third. Not in, or excuse me, you, you, you. <sighs> With the Extreme Automatic uh, 4080 valve body, in the instructions it specifically states that you cannot lock the torque converter up unless you are in fourth gear only. No third, no second, definitely not first. So I can't figure out how to manipulate the Holly to know when the vehicle's in fourth since all the controls that show the computer that it's in fourth, third, and second, all that stuff is missing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire in a switch uh, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. Wow! This is the switch that I'm gonna wire up. Um, this is what they call a momentary switch. Let me let me let me find the one that I'm missing. I bought six, so one of them is, is is around here somewhere. Hold on. Here it is. So the way this switch is designed, you see you got three prongs. You can basically wire this thing up normally closed or normally open. Um, it, it's hard to tell, but you can see like a little diagram on the side that basically tell you out of the three pins what they do. Then you got this long um, little lever here and what that does is it pushes on that button. You hear that clicking noise? I got this off of Amazon, six of these for I think under seven bucks. Um, I'm familiar with these switches because I work in the aviation industry. This particular switch or this style of switch is something that we use all the time in the GSC industry, which is basically ground service equipment, not working on the airplanes, but working on the stuff uh, below wing, like the stuff that push your bags, the thing that push the, the, the plane out. I work on that stuff. And so this is how I come up with this particular switch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a bracket to secure this switch. And with my B&M ratchet shifter, I think I want to, I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna take it out and show you with some light. I wanna mount, I wanna rig up something right here that when it's in fourth, it'll activate that switch. If I didn't want to do that, I could use um, the lever on the uh, driver's side of the transmission. Basically, when you ratchet shift or shift that shifter, there's an arm that kind of does this number. I could bolt that switch down there, but in order to clean them up, clean up the wiring, shorten the wiring length, not having to run anything through a firewall grommet or whatever, I'm gonna see if I can make something work um, on this shifter assembly itself. So let's go ahead and take it out. In case you was wondering what it looked like below, um, all I did was stitch well. I basically made a, a round circle plate out of some probably quarter inch steel, somewhat thick. I stitch welded in because this material right here is super thin. This is thick. And then I, uh, I'm embarrassed, but I use like some Home Depot like, like bath sealant. And then of course that plate I made, it just bolts up to the, the four 10 millimeter headed bolt sections um, all the way around this circle. All right, so now I got this thing in sitting in this vise. I'm gonna show you how this junk work. Neutral, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so this is four. So I need to figure out something on here that for example, when it's in fourth, it'll activate this. So I was thinking about doing something like that. If I keep it in that spot, move it forward, third is not activated, go into fourth is activated. But I also want to take in consideration I need to have somewhere to wire this thing. So, what I was thinking, I got this water pump bolt here. The reason I got this bolt, it's kind of thin. I got this section, this long section that is smooth, so I can cut basically the threads off, cut the head off of here. And I think what I want to do is basically weld it somewhere right here. And then that way I can kind of keep this switch the same angle. Um, not that it matters, but it matters to me. I like to make sure everything is cosmetically pleasing and everything looks lined up. It's just kind of like my OCD. And if I do that, 
Um, I can put this like right here. I can basically cut it, shorten it maybe to here, weld it into place there. And then that way, my wiring can snake right up under here and I can zip tie it and tie it up with my wiring for my neutral safety switch and my reverse lights. Now we're gonna weld this little piece right there. These daggone uh, hammers, or excuse me, these daggone ratchet shifters, old school style for automatics. Um, you have to lubricate these things. So with me welding this, and as you can tell that gap is super small, I'm gonna need to make sure I grease all these movable parts. You have to do that so often. But now that we got that little rod welded into place, now all we gotta do is figure out what we want our bracket to be. And then of course, secure this. Uh, we will be using rivets. So there's got two little small holes right here um, to mount this thing. I don't know what size rivet it is, but a rivet will fit right in there. So we'll probably rivet it like this and then use two rivets to rivet the base of it. If I don't use something like a uh, nut cert um, but I think I might just drill two holes and rivet it that's the final product starting from dry uh, starting from park that's one two three four we got the continuity working you hear it beeping and it looks like I want to use the bottom prong these two prongs here the bottom one with the L and then the bottom one this like the same direction that's third and that's fourth you hear it working third not working fourth working so now all we got to do is find two wires wire these two up run one to a ground run the other one to uh my input output modular 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 as an input set up in the highly EFI I am running Terminator X Max start with the IO section go to inputs and right here TCC input we uh, that's a that's that's what I named it you can name it whatever you want but this is gonna be the input this is the wire coming in to the ECU from that switch because I'm using it in my module um, I, it's got to be a can that's how the module, the, uh, the uh, input output module works. It's a can, doing it as a ground. Boom, enable it, go to configuration. You have to, for the can ID, that's the number on the back of the IO modular. Um, there's, there's a YouTube video that talks about Hertz, but uh, I think the higher the Hertz, the quicker it goes back and forth as far as communicating. Um, you need to know what you're, where it's gonna be wired to. I got it wired to input number three and CAN bus one, all right? Go to your outputs. On the output, same thing, TCC lockup. You have to make that CAN ground, enable it, 
and then when you come over here to configurations I got this set up these are the switch inputs. so this basically means that this whole parameter down here works when this is activated so basically when we're in fourth gear all these parameters will take place as far as locking up the torque converter I got a few things I want to, to base this off of actually two things I want to base it off of speed I want to base it off of TPS so anything above 43 miles an hour and and in between 1% throttle and 25% throttle that's when my torque converter is going to lock up so to break this down when I decel meaning I let off the gas pedal that's going to drop to zero it's going to unlock the converter because it's below one when I cruise around I study my throttle percentage and when I'm cruising you know 45 you know 80 miles an hour on the highway I'm, 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 I'm not going over 25 percent so again is it, when my throttle is percent between 1 percent and 25 percent and above 43 miles an hour and of course in fourth gear meaning it's hitting the switch basically the ECU is sending a, a, a signal to the torque converter lock up on the side of the transmission the reason I did this is because if I were to be in Mexico and race for example when I downshift the third because that switch is not activated this is not gonna work me the torque converter is gonna be unlocked so that's my main reason for doing it and also I'm not trying to tear up a $2,500 transmission if these jokers say in the instructions don't lock it up in third okay so if you go in here and set these parameters up without a switch of any sort you could be in third gear and above 43 miles an hour and it's gonna still be locked up okay if your second gear stretches that long it's gonna be locked up so I hope this information helps somebody peace